Oh. Here we go, here we go, here we go. So, um, yeah. First real video on the Jack Peaks sale from Palmetto, Georgia. Jack Peaks, um, let's see, get it right here. Jack Peaks sales, your lawn equipment headquarters, Shop the rest, buy from the best. All right, so yeah, those guys are pretty cool. They hooked me up with this right here to build and hopefully create the world's fastest MS-170. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, definitely it's gonna be fast, considering, <laughs> considering it's an MS-170, you know. But, uh, so I'm going to break it all down and uh, get to started on making this thing cool. So, one of y'all posted, I need a box. Hold on, there it is. I already had this set up. There we go. One of y'all... Um, posted on my video, I guess it was yesterday, uh, just showcasing that I got this, basically is all it really was. And you said, hey, just so you know, that's a Strato cylinder. And I, it, you know, I get so many comments these days, I, I rarely answer any of them, so. But my reaction to that was, is it really strato saw? Is it? I didn't think that these were strato, but I never thought of it at all. I never, you know, when does my mind ever think of a MS-170? Pretty much never. Ugh. So, um, we're gonna figure out if that person was right. My guess is he probably is. He's probably right. Makes total sense. You know, like I said, I never really thought of it before, but I never thought of an MS-170 on any level, really. So, what do I know, you know? You know? You know? Hold on. So I wonder how quick this is going to be. I bet you this thing's going to come apart pretty quick. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, really? Wasn't expecting that. That's weird. Thanks for being weird, Steel. So this is definitely a clamshell saw. This is currently the cheapest steel chainsaw that they manufacture. And it's probably the cheapest one they've ever made because they've had this going, the same, pretty much basic, the same model going for, I believe, decades now. God, there's already fines like crazy in there got past this filter but um yeah I don't think that they ever made a more purpose homeowner cheap junk saw than this I think this 
is top of the, or bottom of the line, I should say. Wee! I think. But, you know, I gotta, I, <laughs> I gotta say, you know, truthfully, you guys know that I give the brand Steel a bit of grief, you know what I mean? Oh, come on, where's my stuff? But for what it is, I mean, this, nobody expects this to be great, I think. If, if you are expecting that, then you're misled in some way. So for what it is, it honestly is fine. $200 steel chainsaw. Can't ask for a whole lot of quality there, you know? I think it's probably better than Husqvarna's super cheap version because I've heard that those things, the really, really ones, like what is it? I think it's a Husqvarna 130 or something. I've heard that they're just exactly, almost exactly uh, one of the cheap strato charged Polands. And it, it, if it is, oh, oh Lord, those things are trash. Clutch removed. I am really eager to see inside of there as to whether or not it's actually Strato. Mm -mm -mm. You know, I should have set this up a little bit better, shouldn't I? There we go. That anymore. I'm trying to go real fast here. I wanted to get, I, I want to be able to take this whole thing apart in like 15 minutes, but I don't think that's going to happen. So I ought to just slow down and do it right. So what am I going to do to this saw? What am I going to do to this saw? I ain't telling you. Get mad at me. I don't care. I will definitely show you progress along the way. Some things are going to be obvious. Obviously, I'm going to port and polish it. But am I going to share my numbers with you? No. Um, obviously, I'm going to do some sort of a muffler mod to it. Um, and I will show you that. You know, when it happens. But yeah, for the most part, I'm keeping everybody in the dark on this. Because, uh, I just do. I just want to. Now, whenever it's all said and done, everything's over, will I share everything? Of course I will. But, up to the point, no, it's just, you know, a little bit of mystery. It's cool. I like it. I like mystery. Ah, come on.
Ow! Be careful. It's dangerous out there. Let's go ahead and take this off. How's life been treating y'all? Doing all right? You know what we got cooking right now? Literally, cooking. Um, we're cooking the... Uh, Sorry, having a hard time multitasking here. Cooking the plastics for the Christmas giveaway saws. <clears throat> and as soon as we get this thing torn all the way down, we're gonna cook it too. <laughs> mm, okay, break. This is dangerous, guys. So whenever, whenever you're going to pop these brakes loose, put on some safety goggles. Because, yeah, it is dangerous, straight up. What's the best way to do it? Oh, this is going to be awful. <clears throat> there we go. That wasn't so bad, I guess. get this damn thing apart. Seriously. Spilling oil all over the place here. Huh. 
This thing has actual gas and oil tanks. I wasn't expecting to see that. Look at that. Aren't they usually part of the actual clamshell assembly? I believe so. <laughs> That's weird. Oh, and it's got a duckbill valve. Very Poland. <laughs> so far, I see no signs of this being a Strato saw. I did, I was able to peek into the uh, cylinder just a, just a little bit. I was able to peek in there. I mean, I didn't see something that jumped right out at me and said, yeah, this is a Strato saw. All right, how am I going to get this damn brake off? All right, clearly I'm going to have to take that C-clip. Oh, I must find it right now. There's a stink bug down here. <laughs> Found it. Looks like maybe it's coming apart, it's happening. There we go. Oh, the muffler is not particularly clogged up. I mean, no more than most, I would say, you know. Seems fine. I mean, clearly it is clogged up, but, you know. Some of these, you know, you, you can't see daylight through, no matter what angle you turn it and stuff like that. I guess I can go ahead and put that uh, cap right back on the oil reservoir. Maybe it'll stop leaking oil. This is why I didn't want to run it yesterday. Because I knew I was going to be tearing it right down, all the way down. So that's why I didn't want to fire it up. But whenever I looked over there and I saw that I could just easily walk right up and start cutting some cookies, I went ahead and did it. But yeah, I really did not want to fire this thing up yesterday because the whole point of having a brand new saw and why it's awesome is because they're clean. Thank you, Doug. Oh, Indiana Doug was uh, giving away a bunch of Neotech tools at uh, Sawfest. And this was one of them. So was uh, so was this one. Well, I mean, this one could have. I don't. Know, one of them. They could have come with my uh, the MS six hundred and sixty. I got. But for some reason, I think that those are packed away somewhere else. And these are the ones that Doug was giving out. There 
There we go. I ain't gonna throw it away right yet, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna be nothing but trash. Straight trash. There we go. We don't need to take that out yet. Carburetor is removed. Crazy weird thing there. Crazy weird thing there. I'm really looking, I mean, I am really trying to figure out how the hell this handle comes off. Cause I'm just not seeing screws. There is no screws in there. I think maybe it just pops out. Yep, it does. Once you get those black things out of there all they're really doing is holding pressure and yeah damn thing just pops out look at that so there are no screws really holding the handle in place there's only these rubber bits Ta-da! <laughs> That's so weird. Huh, you can tell I don't work on steel very often. Oh, I can hear the joke already. Oh, that's because steels don't need to be worked on. <laughs> All right, we are getting down to the nitty gritty. All right, there's a little, oh, this is a cute little fuel tank. It's so cute. It's so cute. Might as well take the, well, can't take the oil tank out yet. Got to remove the flywheel for that. We almost got it, guys. We're getting really, really close. Um, gonna need that string again. Oh, you know what? I need to check the squish right now before I go further. I'm hoping for 30 thousandths. Looks like 41,000. So let's check it again. Forty-two thousandths. Yeah, that's a bummer. I really wanted thirty thousandths on my squish. Well, why is that? I'm guessing y'all want to know why I would not do the very typical, the very, very typical twenty thousandths squish. I do not want 20,000 squish. 
And that is because these little things are small, fragile. And I believe would not do well with tight compression. I don't want to have, oh shit, I just broke that up. I don't want to have real tight compression because I'm hoping to not only make this thing fast, but also I do not want to run into the problems that some other gentlemen had, had where they went crazy on their unit and it blew itself up, you know, during the trial practice runs and stuff like that. I don't want to deal with that crap. I want to make a good solid runner that'll actually last for a while. But you know? Now let's go ahead and get this flywheel off. Woo, woo, settle down. All right, before we do too much on that, heat. I don't want to use much of that because we got plastic we're dealing with here and hell that flywheel looks like it might be magnesium. I don't think that it is, but boy, if it was, woo, wouldn't that be something? I think I can get it off now. There we go. See, woo, woo, it's hot, hot. It's not too hot though. All right. If you got one of these things, man, always take it loose because they all leak, all of them. 
All right, we're getting close. Very, very close. Aha. Uh -huh. Oil tank removed. Woo. We almost got it all the way down, boys and girls. This is cool. It's very, very cool. All right. Last thing here. Yep. Where'd my torques are in to go? fit. I want my Torx wrench. The one that I got from Indiana Doug. I want it. You guys are probably watching you see it sitting right in front of me. Oh, there you go. Here he is. Here it is. There it is. That's kind of funny. The intake is gnarled up. Looks like it's wanting the air to swirl as it goes in. That's what it looks like to me. Here we go. All right. Now, just for educational purposes, this video has went long enough, so I'm not going to do the timing numbers or anything like that. But I will let you know if it is a strato cylinder or not. Let's go ahead and see. It doesn't look like it's a strato cylinder to me. It looks totally normal. So, I can't remember which one of y'all suggested it, but it was said that in 2013, I guess they redesigned these, and 
The ones previous to that were not Strato, and the new ones are. Oh, let's see. Woo! Could have been a little bit more careful on that. Let me get a, a flashlight here. It is most definitely not a strato cylinder. Not strato. You got your intake, you got your exhaust, quad open ports. We're good. So that's uh, very good news, very good news. It is a double ring piston, which is nice. That means it should be pretty easy to get compression out of this little guy, you know, um, which again would, you know, suggest that you wouldn't have to go to 120 on the squish band or I'm sorry, to 20 on the squish. You could get by with a, not quite as much squish because this thing, the way it's designed, you know, with the double ring, um, it will have more compression anyways. Another reason to not go crazy on the compression with these things is we want RPMs. We want high, 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 high RPMs. And um, yeah, high, high, high compression screws with that. I don't think 20 thousandths would screw with that too much unless, I don't know, 30 is what I want. I want 30 thousandths squish. And you can agree with me or not agree, it's disagree, it's fine. But however long that took, I don't know. Definitely felt like it was a hell of a lot faster than taking apart that Poland 4,000. <laughs> so now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean this up and I am going to remove the Timberwolf plastics and drop this in. But you got to clean it up. Got to get all that grease and stuff off of there and uh, then we'll be cooking. Let's go look at the uh, Timberwolf stuff. Oh, we're at 38 minutes, so it's still a long video. Woo! Let's see what we got going here. Let me back this out. Tardar! Timberwolf plastic looks fantastic. That sticker came off. They normally don't come off. They stay on. The 590 sticker right there. Yeah, we're definitely good on that. We can uh, take this stuff off and drop in the steel. The jackal. All right, guys. Later.